Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Sumugi, and today we're going to talk about target priority in Warhammer 40k. Now, the target priority, I don't mean that using anti-tank weapons to shoot at tanks and using anti-infantry weapons to shoot at infantry. I mean, that's kind of given, you know, that's really basic. We already know that. By tar target priority, I mean that when you're shooting with your shooting weapons, you have to pick the order correctly. All right, this is going to help greatly when you play Warhammer 40k. So let's get started, all right? So target priority, the number one thing you need to worry about is what is the biggest threat to your army right now, all right? When you're shooting with your weapon, you don't just pick random target to shoot at, all right? Let's say there's two identical target. Um, let's say they're both Hellhound, right? They're both going to burn all your Termicon next turn, all right? So uh, one is in the back and one is really near your termagant all right so which one do you shoot at i mean this is like you know like this is practice for you guys obviously the answer is shoot at the closer uh hellhound because it's going to deal damage to your termagant next turn if you don't shoot at it right so instead of shooting the one in the back you want to shoot the one in the front also okay so you see like this is target priority but this is really a simple example you know this the the actual combat can be a lot more complicated than that, all right? Let's say that maybe there's not two target, there's three or four and five, and they all have different positions. And you have to consider uh, each of them might have different wounds, you know, one might be beaten down to maybe like three wounds left, and one is in full health, and one's in half health, and one's really close, and one's really far. You add all of them up together, it's really, really complicated to determine which one is the right target to shoot at, all right? so. This takes experience, all right? This really takes experience which one to shoot at. Whichever you choose, just remember, the one that's going to deal the most damage to you next turn, if you don't deal with it, it's almost always a safe option to choose at, all right? So let's take another more complicated example. Let's say there's a Lehman Rosting Commander, all right? And there is a Basilisk. All right, there's a basilisk. Uh, for those who, you, who uh, for those who you don't know, uh, basilisk is an imperial guard tank unit, which is able to shoot without line of sight, and it's a strength nine AP three, um, and damage of D three. Right, I, I think that's the correct number, but imperial guard player out there can correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's the, probably the number right there. Now the basilisk is really dangerous uh, versus hive guard because hive guard, like um, you know, like basilisk, they can shoot without line of sight. Right? So let's say there's a Lehman Russ and there's a Basilisk, right? And what you have is a squad of Hive Guards and a Tyrannofax, okay? So which one do you kill first? Do you kill the Lehman Russ tank commander, which is, you know, it's obviously very dangerous. And it's most likely going to pound your Tyrannofax into dust next turn if you don't deal with it, all right? But same thing goes with Basilisk. Basilisk, Basilisk is definitely going to do something about your Hive Guard uh, if you let it survive this turn. All right. Let's say Basilisk is outside, uh, is out out in the open. All right. So Terran effects can shoot at the Basilisk as Basilisk as well. It can also shoot at the Lima Ross, which is obviously out in the open as well. Let's say they're both two out in the open. You have Terran effects and Hive Guard. So how do you target uh, the right unit? All right. I'll let you think about it. All right. That's right. You answer it correctly. You shoot at the Basilisk. Why do you do that? Okay. Let's say if you kill the Lehman Ross, all right? Let's say if you kill Lehman Ross, all right? Your Terran Fast kills Lehman Ross and your Hive Guard, they both direct their fire to the Lehman Ross and kill the Lehman Ross, that's great. They kill the tank commander and it could be a Warlord, you might get like a Slater Warlord. But let's say it's not a Warlord, let's say they put all the other factors aside, let's just say it's just a Lehman Ross tank commander with Battle Cannon and there is a Basilisk behind. Well, if you shoot at the Lehman Ross tank commander, what's gonna happen is next turn, the Basilisk that survives is going to shoot at your Hive Guards. All right? He's going to shoot at your Hive Guards because you didn't kill it this turn and it's able to shoot at either the Hive Guard or the Terran Effects. Because obviously he can shoot what's, you know, what he can see, but he cannot shoot at the Hive Guard, uh, normally speaking, but since he's a Basilisk, he's able to do that. So the correct answer here is actually to shoot at the Basilisk when you can. All right? Kill the Basilisk. And next turn, when it's turn for Imperial Guard player to kill stuff, um, he can only shoot at your turn effects with his Lehman Ross. Because obviously your Hive Guard is out of line of sight, right? He's out of line of sight. So 
that Lehman Ross tank commander doesn't really have a choice. He can only choose to shoot at the turn effects because he's, um, the hive guard is never visible to Lehman Ross. So do you get this? Like this is the whole idea of choosing like the right target to shoot at, choosing the right threat to eliminate first. You don't just like, oh, there's a Lehman Ross. Why do I just fucking kill it, right? You don't do that. You, ass you assess the threat and the situation and think about what is like the most dangerous scenario for you. If you leave the Basilisk alive, he can shoot at your turn effects or your hive guard because it's able to shoot out of line of sight. But if you kill, uh, but if you kill it, then the Lehman Ross can only choose to shoot at turn effects. He has no other options. He cannot shoot at your hive guard since it's out of line of sight. Okay, I think I'm rambling a little bit here, but you get the idea. That's the a little bit more complicated. Was well, not exactly complicated. This is still very easy. When it comes to choosing your target but like in the actual combat you have to take a lot more into consideration all right like i said maybe the lehman ross is a warlord then you know you might want to get the slate of warlord that you need to consider it okay so not only you have to identify which target is the most threatening to you you also have to assess your own firepower let's say there's a um castellan imperial knight all right toughness eight you know, 28 wounds, 3 plus armor save, uh, 5 plus invulnerable save, but with Warlord trait, it's like 4 plus invulnerable save, and you can rotate Iron Shield, which is 3 plus. It's just really tough to deal with, all right? And then next to the Imperial Knight, there is a Lima Ross. Let's say there's a Lima Ross again, all right? There's a Lima Ross sitting next to it, all right? And you let's say you only have, um, again, High Guard and Terran effects. Which one do you shoot first? I mean, according to what I just said before, obvious the obvious answer will be shooting at the knight, the castellan, right? Because castellan can do the most damage. You know, he can do the most damage to anything it wants compared to the tank commander here, correct? But this is when the assess your firepower comes in. When you shoot at the target, you need to know if you're able to kill it or at least wound it so much that it's unable to perform its original capability anymore. That's why we have to... Uh, degrading damage chart uh, for vehicles, most most likely vehicles. But let's say you cannot possibly uh, degrade the uh, Imperial Knight's damage table so low that it's combat ineffective, then the correct option here is to shoot at the tank commander, deal with that first, kill the unit you're able to actually kill. Don't shoot at a random gigantic monster because it looks scary to you. Yeah, it's a bigger threat, no problem, but if you're not able to kill it, you're just wasting firepower. That could have been killing something maybe slightly less important, but that thing can actually do damage as well. Always aim to eliminate enemy firepower. All right, if you cannot eliminate uh, or at least reduce enemy firepower this turn, then don't try. All right, so now you might ask, it's like, oh, but it's all dice, man. Like, how do I, how, how am I fucking I supposed to know? It is all luck. But that's not true. It is not just luck. It's luck and logic. You have to actually think about when you roll the dice, you have to think about the average damage you'll be dealing before you even roll the dice. We always talk about average here. When you see all the pro players playing like on the table, they're not just shooting a random target at will. They're just like, oh, uh, the Imperial Knight is really scary. Let's shoot at the Imperial Knight. That's never what's going on in your head. What's going on in your head is they're doing the math. They're assessing the situation, all right? They're assessing the situation. They know what their weapon strength is. They know what the target's toughness is. They already did the calculation, all right? So for example, for example, Hive Guard, let's say six Hive Guards, right? Six Hive Guards shooting at the toughness eight, three plus armor unit, which again, is Lima Russ, because I love Lima Russ. <laughs> I love tanks. Anyways, so let's say it's Lima Russ. All right, Lima Ross toughness eight, three plus armor save. You have six hive guard to shoot at it. What is the expected damage uh, you'll be dealing with this one squad of shooting? Okay, you start doing the math. All right, so you start with the hit. How many hits do you have for hive guards? You have twelve hits, right? Because each weapon is heavy two, and you have six of them, so six times two is twelve. Right, that's twelve hit. All right, twelve times the chance of hitting, which is uh, three plus, right? But since you're in Kronos, uh, it's a 3 plus plus the chance of rerolling once. Now, the chance of uh, 3 plus is 66%. All 
All right, three plus is 66, uh, 66%, but if you add re-rolling once, it will increase another 11%, which will result you uh, 77%. All right, so you use 12 hit times 77%, uh, which is 0 0.77, uh, 77, you will yield uh, 9.27 hits. All right, you'll get 9.27 hits, then what do you do? 9.27 hit times the chance of wounding. What's the strength on Imperial Cannon? It's strength eight. What target we're talking about here is toughness eight. So the chance of strength eight to wound toughness eight is 50%, you know, which is 50%, so it's four plus, right? Four plus is uh, 50%. So you times 0 0.5, which will give you 4.62 wounds. All right, 4.62 wounds, but it's not over here, you know. This is before we uh, rolling the damage table. We're just talking about this is the wounding. Now the enemy has to pass the saving roll. Imperial Cannon has minus two AP, so uh, for three plus armor save unit, they only uh, pass the save on five plus, right? Because they only pass on five plus. So 4.62 wounds times 0.33%, all right, 33%, which is 1.5 wound they will be saving, which means three wounds will go through. Three wounds will go through its armor save. So what do we do next? It's not three wounds. Three, you have to time the D3 damage of each Imperial Cannon uh, hit, right? So three, the average of D3 is two, all right? The average of D3 is two, so three times two equals six. So one round of shooting with Hive Guards, you're expecting to, to do six wounds on the target after save after everything after hit after wound after re-rolling after rolling save after everything you'll be looking at maybe on average six wounds all right so now let's go back earlier when we talk when i talk about you have to assess the situation let's say there is a lima ross that has 10 wounds left all right and then there is a hellhound next to it which are obviously much easier to kill let's say it only has like um, I don't know, maybe like full health, but doesn't matter because it's much easier for health guard, uh, hive guard to kill the hellhound. Let's say hellhound is really easy to kill. Lehman Ross, on the other hand, has 10 wounds. So do you shoot at the Lehman Ross here? No, you don't because on average, you'll only be doing six wounds, right? They will only be doing the six wounds. You won't be able to kill the Lehman Ross here. All right, so why not just direct your firepower to the hellhound, right? And this calculation I just did back there is not... You can't do it like during the game. It's not possible. You can't just like, all right, I'm going to shoot at your Lima Ross. Let me just grab my calculator real quick. Let me just calculate the chances. First of all, it's lame, all right? It looks really lame. And second of all, you're just wasting everyone's time. You can do this before you even go to play the game. You can, you can calculate all the chances with at least with your arsenal, right? You don't, you don't need to know about the enemy's arsenal, but you need to at least know yours, right? Let's say you bring Hive Guards and Terrell Effects. When you have both of these units on the table, you have to assess the situation. Okay, you know what? Hmm, toughness eight, I'll be dealing on average about six wounds, right? Six wounds. And versus toughness seven, I'll be dealing about eight in average. You can do all the math. All right, I'm gonna spend like an episode talking about math uh, when I have time, but this is just like a sneak peek of what I'm gonna talk about later. All right, so assess the situation. Know what you're shooting at, know what you're able to kill and what you're not able to kill, and target prioritize correctly. Okay, so another example. Let's talk about turn effects, all right? You can just take this number away because I've done all the calculation. Turn effects, it's a strength 10, AP3 weapon, has D6 damage, okay? Let's say it's shooting at a toughness 8 unit with 3 plus armor save. Again, Lima Russ. <laughs> Lima Ross is such a prime target to choose. Anyways, so uh, turn effects can shoot six times if it did not move, which you shouldn't move, right? So six times the blister skill of turn effects is four plus, right? It's four plus, so it's 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.5, which is 50%. But you have to take into account of Kronos re-rolling once to hit, which add another 0 0.11, which will make it 0 0.61. So six times 0 0.61, equals to 3.66 hit you will have about average 3.5 or 4 hits right so you take the hit and then you multiply it with the probability of wounding which is um again 66 percent because you'll be wounding toughness 8 on 3 plus and 3 plus is 66 percent which gives you 2.41 wound 
All right, so now you wound the enemy. He has to pass the save. Now, Rupture Cannon has a AP of three, so he will only able to save this wound on the six plus, which is 16%, all right? So 2.41 times 16% equals to 0.38 saved, which means two wounds on average pass through. Two wounds pass through, but this is not just two wounds. You have to times the, uh, the damage, which is D6. The average of D6 it's three. So two times three, you'll get about six damage with turn effects. All right. So now if you take turn effects, all right, and you shooting at a toughness seven unit, what happens? Does the damage increase? Does the expected damage increase? No, it does not. You'll be like, whoa, what? How come it does not? Wait, what? Because Rupture Cannon is strength 10. All right. When you're wounding on the toughness eight or toughness seven, you always wound on the three plus. All right, unless you double the toughness, which you are certainly not. So by this, you know that using a target effects to shoot at a toughness seven unit is not worth it. All right, it's not worth it um, because you'll be do expecting to do similar amount of damage versus toughness eight unit. So use target effects rupture cannon to shoot at a toughness eight unit and use your hive guard to shoot at toughness 7 unit, all right? So do more of these calculations because like for tier units, we don't exactly have that many shooting units. We have Hive Cards, we have Tyranifacts, we have Exocrine, we have Carnifacts, we have Venom Cannon, and that's about it. That's the regular shooting unit. If I miss anything, please let me know. But like, if we're talking about like anti-tank firepower, this, these are the regular show-ups. Like, like they, they show up all the time. You know these four units so do some calculation yourself all right do some calculation yourself i'm gonna leave a cheat sheet in the description so you can look at what's the um dice number translating to a percentage and you can just do some calculation yourself and have fun so yeah uh, that's it about uh, that's about it today i'm just gonna make a short video talking about target priority uh, this is only like the first part all right so we talk about assess your firepower um tomorrow um uh, or maybe this weekend i don't know whenever i have time I will teach you how to pick the right weapon when you're writing your army list. All right, I'm gonna teach you what's the right weapon to pick and how to compare and contrast what the unit does versus what this unit does. And then eventually, doesn't matter what army you play, be a Terranid, be an Imperial Guard, be an AD Mac, doesn't matter. Once you get this calculation mindset going on, you will have no trouble picking the right unit when you find when you get yourself a new codex because you can just do the number just plug it in do all the numbers and you can see oh okay this unit is better versus toughness 7 unit this unit is better versus toughness 8 right all right so anyway this video has been dragged on too long thank you guys for watching and i hope you guys have a good day and i'll see you guys later goodbye